Okay, I had to interrupt this video that I was doing uh, for this garage build uh, uh, for a good friend of mine who's a realtor who we do projects for. And uh, it's because uh, for the first time I'm using this Medic uh, floor truss uh, extension. These Medic, and I'll leave a, a link below there for uh, SketchUp. I'm using SketchUp Pro. And I'm so excited about this because I used to spend hours and hours drawing individual building components and then copying them, you know, around. Uh, but this one's just really exciting. I don't know why I get excited over it. I geeked out over this. So I had to do a special video just on this. Um, I did, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going to build a floor system over this garage because they want to be able to put uh, some area, living area above this garage. And you'll see this entire video uh, later on. I just, uh, again, I got excited about this. But what I usually do is I hold my rim board on my WI joists uh, out flush with the OSB so that I don't have to put OSB over the rim board, which is another more dense uh, OSB. It seems redundant to me. So what I did was I drew myself a construction line to give myself a corner. I don't know if you can see that. This corner right here. So what I'm gonna do is select this um, Monique truss, draw floor truss. And in the floor truss section, they have the TGIs, the, the what we call the wood eye joists, um, truss joist or wood eye joist. There's different brands here. I'm just gonna select TGI and we'll have a rectangular floor. So I'm gonna say, okay. I'm gonna select that little point right there. Then I'm gonna go down here. And I haven't tried, now honestly, I tried selecting the framing earlier and it worked fine. I haven't actually tried selecting that point yet. We're gonna see how this works. And then I can manually adjust the floor system. Let's see if I can get this spun around. Then I'm going to select this other corner. Okay. Okay, good. So it did accept. It looks like that's going to work. And then rim board, yes. Now, the rim board I've used in the past is an inch, uh, but we'll leave it an inch and a quarter. I think it's an inch. I'm going to go ahead and I need to verify that, but I'll show you how I can change it in a minute. We'll say okay, and it looks like my width, before it was sticking to 30 feet, but now it's adding the width of uh, two pieces of 7 16 OSB here. And joy spacing is 16 inches. And I'm gonna say advanced floor option, GS. This is where you can add your sheeting. I'm not gonna add the sheeting right now, I can add it later because I want you to see the joist without having to delete the sheeting. I don't want a seal plate because I'm on top of this wall. If I had a foundation, I would add a seal plate. So I don't need any of that. Insert, no, I don't need a stem wall either. And boom, look at that. I have instant <laughs> TGIs and that's just awesome. Uh, because like I said, I would literally draw these things before, you know, just manually. And then I would create a component out of them and then I would just copy them down. Uh, this is awesome. Now, let's see if the spacing, what's on there, you know, 16 inches. Now the, the series of joists I'm gonna specify is, um, I think it's a GP90. I was just looking at them here because they will actually span further. Let's see, I was looking at 40 pounds live load, 20 pounds uh, dead load. And they'll actually span 27 feet. They'll over, so I'm over spanning these because I think he's gonna put a pool table up there. And what I may do is actually find out where the pool table is going and put a couple of LVLs under the point loads. Or I may call Georgia Pacific and ask them what I need to do. But in any event, here we go. Here's the information. You can see the GP90 has a three and a half inch top and bottom cord on it, which is really awesome because when you start laying your sheeting, 
that's a huge wide nail uh, nailing area. I've used these before. <laughs> I didn't even know they still made these inch and three quarters. These are really narrow ones and they're just, uh, they're kind of a pain. They, they're kind of tall and lanky. The minimum uh, top and bottom cord um, I would use is the two and a half. But I'm gonna use on this, I'm gonna use the three and a half top and bottom because, and use this GPI 90 series uh, because we, uh, he just wants it to be strong. And so, but anyway, I just thought that was awesome. Uh, that probably saved me, I don't know, a couple of hours worth of work. And uh, of course I'll pass that savings on to the owner. Now what I do have to do is get a stair in here. It just occurred to me, honestly, but I think that's going to be easy. Let's see if it actually, his uh, wall, Engineer Glock, complex roof, Medique tools, extend trim, trim, trim. No, but that's no big deal because what you can do is um, I can go in here and just edit, you know, one or two joists here to create an opening for the stair. But before I do that, and I'm going to go ahead and go back to edit floor assembly, and I'm going to say yes to floor sheeting. That'll save me a little time because I literally used to. Uh, draw each sheet of plywood or Advantech and I would copy it around. <laughs> so the floor sheeting, no, no seal plate. And I'll just have to update it. Boom, there it is. So I'm really excited about these tools. This is going to allow me to do more design and more production work. And I just really appreciate the Medic people um, for letting me try these out. And uh, you can. Uh, these, I'm pretty sure these will work with the free version of SketchUp too. Um, and uh, now I can go around and delete those construction lines. Now I see I can go back to, I can get to the business of doing this second floor and you can, you'll be able to see that in the, the long version. Thanks guys.